court does call the case of the people versus Virgil Ross. We're ready in that matter. Well, hold on a moment. Go ahead. Alex Chavalowski on behalf of the people. Lauren Brown, Deputy Chief Public Defender, being on behalf of Mr. Virgil Ross. Mr. Ross, please state your name for the record. Uh, Virgil James Ross. You know, hold on one more. Yes, this is the one. He had two cases. Oh, he's got I, two. I didn't realize that. So this is not the one that he jerked. That one did get jerked. Oh, that other one got a jerk. This is, okay, I was not aware of that. Okay. All right, what are we doing in this case? So here's... Your Honor, before we get started, I believe Mr. Ross would like to address the court. Mr. Ross. Uh, yes, uh, Your Honor, there's a breakdown in communication between me and my current counsel, as well as the public defender office. At my arraignment, I was denied bond. The arraignment was for an alleged bank robbery uh, charge, and the public defender used MCR 6-106B to deny me bond. Based on his rules stating that I've been convicted of... Well, the, the public defender did that? Yes, and not... Uh, Mr. Lauren Brown, but uh, the public defender's office that the public defender that was assigned to me did that. And uh, based on that, denied you, denied you bond? The magistrate denied bond after they used the Michigan court rules, sir. Okay, so after that happened, uh, stating that I've been convicted of two or more violent felonies in 15 years, and this was not true, the public defender uh, failed to just simply look on MDOC Otis and seeing that I only had one violent crime. Also, uh, with my current and present counsel, uh, I haven't been able to put any input or insist in my own defense. Uh, I've requested motions for uh, discovery and full disclosure, and as well as the custody order, and neither one of these motions are uh, privileged. Also, I've asked for uh, any type of paperwork concerning my case, and just until 36 hours ago, I was just notified that the third degree home invasion charge was changed to B&E. Um, that's part of the breakdown in, uh, in the communication. I don't know that, sir. Go ahead. I'll let you finish. Yes, and uh, I understand and comprehend that I'm not entitled to uh, have the attorney of my choice, but also I'm unfortunately indigent, and I can't afford to retain counsel. But the Michigan Constitution, United States Constitution said I had a due process right to have assistance of counsel. So I believe that there's good cause that exists where there's clearly a difference of opinion between me and my current attorney. I believe that I do should, should and have- And so a, your current attorney, the yes. one with a law degree, you have a difference of opinion. Yes. I just want to get this right. Yes. Oh, okay, yes. go ahead. Go ahead yes. then. It, I mean, the difference of opinion is I believe that I should be able to assist my counsel in my own defense. And even though it's early, I believe the disagreement has caused a fundamental trial tactic as well as a meaningful defense that in the near in the future. And I'm just respectfully asking that my current counsel be replaced immediately. Did your current counsel be what? Replaced immediately. Yeah, okay. Um, what date did we set that on? Your Honor. We sent you a letter of this. 20 seconds? Okay. Um, yeah, Mr. Brown, go ahead if you want to respond before I do. I just want to, I don't know if well, I'll Mr. Go Ross even knows this. He's got another case before me that your counsel's filed a motion to protect your interest in the case. Um, and the court has already gotten a prosecutor's response and we've set it for hearing. So that's interesting, these people not working for you, but... Go ahead, Mr. Brown. Yes, go ahead. Did not work. I didn't say it wasn't working. You know what? You know what? I, I didn't say you. I said Mr. Brown can go ahead. Mr. Brown. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, um, the court should be aware that we put s several, several man hours in this. We've had investigators um, going across um, downtown Ann Arbor seeking evidence and information uh, on this case. Um, I've spoken with Mr. Ross several times, twice visited him. Uh, spoken to him by phone and for spoken to him with a video conference. Uh, Mr. Ross believes that he cannot work with our office and his belief is affecting our ability to be able to work for him um, in a zealous manner. Um, so we are working with Mr. Ross. He doesn't believe that's the case, but I think that belief is the real thing here. That's going to cause a problem with our continuing to be able to zealously represent him as uh, he feels that his opinion on how things should be done um, is 
if not superior, at least equal to ours. So that's all I'm going to say. Mr. Ross, anything else you want to say? Yes, I just believe there's no transparency between me and my attorney. I believe that I should have my discovery. I believe I should have my police reports. I have none of these things. And I've been in this county jail for five months. Also, I, sh I should have been notified earlier of the charge being changed from a home invasion to a third degree. So that in itself, that- Well, I don't know why you're in the, Why were you in there five months? I this said case, five weeks, sir. You were five weeks. five weeks, okay. I haven't got not one piece of paper from the public defender's office concerning either charge. So let's see. I don't have his bond is denied in this case. Is it the other case that it's denied? In the bank robbery, yes. Yeah, that's not before me today. Yes, it is, sir. How is not? I got two people. Why? What? Hold on a minute. You're going to tell your attorney what to do, and then you're going to tell me what to do. I'm not telling nobody. Or what, what I have. You Listen should have to two me. Cases. You have Listen cases. to me. That case, your counsel filed a motion to protect your interests. I just said it to you. The problem that you're having is you're not listening. Mr. Brown filed a very detailed motion with this court that this court reviewed, requested a response from the prosecutor. The prosecutor filed their response. This court immediately set that case because of partially the bond and the issue that Mr. Brown brought before the court. I set that case for hearing. What day, Ms. The 22nd. The 22nd at 2 p.m. So, sir, no, that case is not before me today. So, Your Honor, what I'm saying Are is we you understood? Don't this information. I don't know any of this. I haven't seen the motion. Well, now you do. Here's what we'll do. We'll just make this easy for everybody. What time is that other one set? 2 p.m. 2 p.m.? court is going to find good cause to adjourn um, the probable cause conference in this manner. I will adjourn it one week out so that both of his cases can go together and he can still have his complaint, I guess, that he has. And maybe if he listened to his attorneys, he won't have the complaint. But I'll let him do what he's going to do. I'll adjourn it to June 22nd, 2023, 9 a.m. Motion. All right. See? Okay, why don't we do this? If he wants to play it that way, we'll just make both those hearings in person. Because if he wants to play that way, Mr. Brown, what do you want me to do with that? Um, Your Honor, I will leave this completely in the court's discretion. Absolutely. Okay, let's bring him up. I'll set that in person. That's at 2 p.m. on the 22nd, and we'll see how he wants to act that day. His request for withdrawal of counsel denied. Bond continued. Thank you. Now you're done and can leave.